you know, having calcium in your arteries is not a good thing. In fact, the coronary artery calcification test is one of the best tests to predict mortality from all deaths. So that's a simple, quick test that you can get done to see if you have calcium in your arteries. But my question is this, why does calcium end up in the arteries in the first place? Is it just merely a lack of vitamin K2 that the calcium is building up? Or is it part of the Band-Aid that comes with cholesterol and protein? Now, the big danger of you having plaque in the arteries is it breaking off and getting lodged somewhere where you, it stops oxygen to either your heart or your brain. So you either get a heart attack or a stroke. So I think it's really important to understand more about this placking and definitely why the calcium is in there. Well, I want to introduce you to biofilms. What is a biofilm? Biofilms are collective groups of microbes like bacteria or fungus or other microbes that tend to attach to surfaces, okay? Now in the environment, 95% of all the bacteria live in the communities, okay, as biofilms. I mean, if you just go to the park where you see a little stream where there's water and you pick up a rock in the stream, you're gonna notice it's a little slippery, a little film on that rock. That is biofilms. Bacteria and other microbes are forming together and they're attaching themselves to that rock. Well, the same thing happens in your body with tartar on your teeth. That tartar plaque is biofilms. And so these microbes work together to help their survival. And they release calcium to protect themselves, which also allows them to go underneath the radar with our own immune system. So our immune system has a hard time finding and attacking them. And so biofilms are resistant to antibiotics. In fact, they become stronger when you take antibiotics. So this is a survival mechanism created by these microbes to just survive better. So even when you get like these uh, tonsil stones, they found biofilm in those tonsil stones. They're even finding biofilms in the joints of rheumatoid arthritis patients. Now, my thought is, and I'm still trying to do research on this, do you also have biofilms in patients with osteoarthritis or maybe spurring or even stenosis? That would be interesting information, but I don't know if anyone has done a study on that. There's also biofilms in the arteries of diabetic patients with severe artery disease. Biofilms also exist on catheters, uh, when you get a prosthetic, like an artificial hip, or anything in your body involving plastic tubing, these microbes tend to leach on, attach, and develop biofilms. Now, another side note with biofilms is that one of the things they do eat is iron. And your friendly microbes also compete for this iron. And since we're talking about plaque and stress, there's actually an increase in risk from getting a heart attack and dying uh, from stress by 18.4% as well as an increase of dying from heart attack when you exercise by 14.1% if you have plaque in your arteries. Now, the one theory on that is stress increases epinephrine. Epinephrine increases the release of free iron, which apparently can feed the biofilms, increase those colonies, and then they can break off and lodge somewhere else in the body. So what do we do about this problem? How do we get rid of biofilms? This remedy I'm gonna talk about uh, is considered quackery. It's heavily attacked. It's considered dangerous by conventional medicine and definitely unscientific in snake oil, despite having massive, credible research that is in the scientific journals. There's like over 6,100 different papers in the scientific journals on this one remedy. And that is this, hydrogen peroxide. Now, you've probably heard about hydrogen peroxide being a great um, disinfectant, uh, using it to clean um, your counter spaces, you know, from mold. And maybe you heard its effectiveness as a mouthwash to help reduce tartar on your teeth. But when I did a deep dive on this topic, I was blown away by the amount of scientific research on this topic, which I'm going to put links down below. And personally, this is my own opinion, anything that is that heavily attacked, okay, in the news, in the media, in the scientific community being very ineffective and snake oil and it doesn't work, chances are it's probably very, very effective 
as are many inexpensive remedies that compete with uh, big pharma. So all I'm saying is hear me out, check it out, do your own deep dive, check with your doctor before implementing this. But this is extremely interesting and it makes a lot of logical sense. Our body makes hydrogen peroxide. It has been proven to penetrate the biofilms, kill bacteria, fungus, yeast, mold, viruses, and other microorganisms. And then the byproduct of this hydrogen peroxide is water in oxygen. In fact, hydrogen peroxide is used as a signaling or communication molecule to tell the immune system to release interferon, which is an immune chemical that interferes with the reproduction of viruses. Now, as a little bit of a side note, there are other things that help produce biofilms as well, like vitamin K1, okay, and vitamin E. But I'm going to give you one of the protocols in one of the books. Um, you want to get 8% food grade hydrogen peroxide. And the most important thing you want to know is you never want to put straight concentrated hydrogen peroxide in your body at all. It's very, very toxic. It's very uh, corrosive. So you don't want to do that. You're going to be diluting this 8% food grade hydrogen peroxide into distilled water, not tap water, but distilled water. And you may want to start out with three drops, okay, in this eight ounces of water for the first day. And you'd want to do that dosage three times a day. Now on day two, you want to add an additional drop. So now you're up to four drops of this 8% food grade hydrogen peroxide in this eight ounce glass of distilled water, and you would do that three times a day. And so each day, you're gonna to continue to add an additional drop, okay, of hydrogen peroxide into that eight glasses of water, and you wanna drink that three times a day until you hit day 21, where you're gonna stop. Now, as you do this, if for some reason you have a negative reaction, okay, let's say you have this, you wanna stop what you're doing for a while, and you want to go really, really slow. You don't want to create an immune reaction when you do this. In fact, I have done so many different cleanses in the past where I just kept going and I ended up getting sick for two weeks because it created an immune reaction and I had to wait two weeks for this whole thing to uh, settle down. So go real slow. And this protocol is extra conservative right here. But at the very least, I wanted to introduce you to this concept and make you aware of what hydrogen peroxide can possibly do. So you can do your research, of course, check with your doctor before implementing this. But I was actually blown away about how much research that goes way back to 1920. And since we're on the topic of the immune system, the next best video for you to watch would be the one I did on the immune system. Check it out. I put it up right here.